Fast, quiet, and loaded with powerful new weapons, America's latest nuclear submarine is one of the most advanced machines ever built for war. Every part of it shows years of research and smart design, bringing together stealth, long-range travel, and high-tech systems in one powerful underwater vessel. Built to lead on the battlefield, this submarine can move faster, dodge threats, and strike with precision, making it a serious challenge for any enemy beneath the sea. But what makes it so different from older submarines? And how could it change the balance of power around the world, especially now that control of the oceans is more important than ever? Join us as we explore how this new American submarine works, what it can do, and why it's making waves in global defense. For over 40 years, America's nuclear-powered stealth submarines have quietly protected the nation by patrolling oceans across the globe. But now, a new generation is needed. The United States Navy has been working to replace the aging fleet, but building these advanced submarines has a heavy price tag. The project cost at least $130 billion, and it will likely go even higher before it's complete. That might sound like a huge amount, and it is. To put it into perspective, that's more than the entire yearly budget of many countries. America's nuclear weapons are delivered in three main ways. Missiles launched from underground silos across the country, bombs dropped from military planes, and warheads fired from stealth submarines deep under the ocean. Together, these three make up what defense experts call the nuclear triad. And out of all three parts, the submarines are considered the most important. Why are they considered important? Because they are the hardest to detect, even harder to destroy, and they carry enough nuclear weapons to wipe out an entire city. They are basically mobile, hidden missile launchers that can stay underwater for several months, always ready to strike if needed. But there is a problem. The submarines currently in use, the Ohio class, are old. They were designed back in the 1960s and 70s, and they first entered service in 1981. As any military analyst can imagine, keeping them in working condition is becoming more expensive every year. To fix that, the Navy planned to roll out a new class of submarines called the Columbia class. These would be smarter, more advanced, and more reliable. The goal was to build 12 submarines at around $9 billion each, with the first one ready by 2027. Construction on the first Columbia class submarine began on October 1st, 2020. It won't be ready for service until 2031, over 10 years from start to finish, showing just how complicated these machines are to build. On June 3, 2022, the Navy announced the first submarine would be named the USS District of Columbia with hull number SSBN-826. They chose this name to avoid mix-ups with the USS Columbia, which is a different type of submarine already in use. The new Columbia-class submarines were designed by Electric Boat with support from Newport News Shipbuilding, two of the biggest names in American naval construction. The original plan was to build 12 submarines in total, and work on the first one began in 2021. Each submarine will carry 16 missile tubes, and each will launch a powerful nuclear missile known as the Trident 2D5 Life Extension Missile. That is the same type of long-range missile used on today's Ohio-class submarines. From the ninth submarine onward, the Navy plans to upgrade the weapons to a newer version called the Trident 2D5 Life Extension 2. These submarines are truly enormous. Each one will measure around 560 feet long, about the length of one and a half football fields and 43 feet wide. This is the exact length of the older Ohio-class submarines, but the Columbia-class will be about one foot wider. That extra space may seem small, but it gives engineers more room to install modern systems, upgraded technology, and improved living quarters for the crew. The planners had to run detailed calculations before deciding how many of these submarines to build. They needed to figure out how many nuclear missiles should be at sea and ready to go at any given time. Then they looked at how many each submarine could carry and how likely each vessel could stay hidden from enemies while remaining ready to launch if necessary. Another key factor was maintenance. Submarines regularly need time in port for repairs and servicing, so the Navy had to consider how many submarines would be offline at any moment. This helped determine the total number needed to ensure the United States nuclear weapons are effective and reliable at all times. To keep costs down, the Navy explored different design options, 
One idea was to add missile tubes to the existing Virginia-class attack submarines. Another was to update the current Ohio-class design and keep building those. The third option was to create a brand new submarine design from scratch. In the end, the Navy decided that building an entirely new design was the most cost-effective way to meet all the technical needs. It might sound strange, but starting fresh turned out to be cheaper in the long run. Here's one example. The other two options, upgrading older submarines, would have required midlife refueling, which is a long, expensive process. However, the Columbia-class submarines come with a major advantage. Each one is built with a nuclear reactor that lasts the entire life of the submarine. That means no refueling is needed, and the submarine can stay in service without having to be taken apart midway through its lifespan. To keep everything on track, the Navy completed a detailed design plan in April 2014. It was a massive 300-page report that listed 159 technical requirements. These included everything from weapons and emergency escape routes to seawater systems, doors, hatches, and internal piping. One key decision in the design was the length, 560 feet. This size allows enough space inside the pressure hull to fit all the complex systems the submarine needs to operate for decades deep under the sea. On the 28th of July, 2016, it was announced that the first submarine in the new Columbia class would be named Columbia to honor the District of Columbia. A few months later, on the 14th of December, 2016, the Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mabus, officially confirmed the name of the class. Then on the 28th of October, 2020, Navy Secretary Kenneth J. Braithwaite revealed the name of the second submarine in the class. It will be called the USS Wisconsin, named after the U.S. state of Wisconsin. Its whole number is SSBN 827. Two major challenges stand in the way of this massive project, keeping the supply chain running smoothly and having enough skilled workers to build these highly advanced submarines. With so many specialized parts and jobs involved, even a small delay in one area can affect the entire schedule. The new Columbia-class submarines, also known by their earlier name, SSBNX, are still in development. Still, the Navy has already outlined several key features that will define these next-generation vessels. Each submarine is designed to serve for an impressive 42 years, during which it will complete about 124 nuclear deterrent patrols. One of the most important upgrades over the older Ohio-class submarines is the nuclear fuel core. While Ohio-class submarines require a complex and expensive midlife refueling, the Columbia-class will be powered by a nuclear core designed to last the entire service life of the submarine, saving both time and money. The new submarines will carry 16 missile launch tubes, which is fewer than the 24 found on the older Ohio-class. However, each tube will be the same size with a diameter of 87 inches, large enough to hold a Trident 2D5 missile, the main long-range nuclear weapon used by the United States Navy. Despite having fewer tubes, the Columbia-class maintains the same powerful strike capability with more modern and efficient systems. In other words, the new submarines will have a similar shape and size, but will be packed with more efficient technology and upgraded systems to meet modern needs. According to the United States Navy, the Columbia class must be built with the most advanced stealth and survivability features available. These submarines are expected to remain hidden and mission ready for their full 40-year lifespan, ensuring they stay relevant and undetectable in an increasingly competitive global environment. In November 2012, the United States Naval Institute shared new details about the design of the upcoming Columbia-class submarines using information from the Naval Sea Systems Command. One standout feature is the use of X-shaped control fins, called hydroplanes, at the back of the submarine. These fins help the submarine move smoothly and stay stable underwater. The X shape makes the submarine easier to steer and helps keep it quieter while submerged, an important advantage for staying hidden. Another change in the Columbia-class submarines is the position of the dive planes, which are like the wings that help the submarine move up and down underwater. On older submarines, these dive planes were placed on the sides of the main body or hull, similar to how airplane wings are attached to the sides of the fuselage. But in the Columbia-class, the dive planes are mounted on the sail which is the vertical tower that sticks up from the top of the submarine. 
It's like putting the steering fins on top instead of the sides. This new position gives the crew better control, especially when the submarine is moving slowly or rising near the surface. Kind of like how moving the rudder on a boat helps it turn more smoothly in shallow waters. One of the most important upgrades in the Columbia-class submarines is the switch to an electric drive system. In older submarines, the nuclear reactor worked a bit like a car engine. It used gears to turn the propeller directly, creating noise that could be picked up by enemy sonar. But in the Columbia class, that setup has been replaced. Instead, the reactor heats water into steam, which then generates electricity, much like how a power plant works. That electricity runs a motor that quietly turns the propeller. It's similar to how modern electric cars use battery power to drive the wheels without making much noise. For a submarine that needs to stay hidden deep underwater, being quiet is one of its greatest strengths, and this new system helps it do just that. To cut down on costs and speed up production, the Navy is also using proven technology from earlier submarine programs, especially from the Virginia-class fast attack submarines. For example, the Columbia-class will use a pump jet propulsor which is a quieter and more efficient way of moving through water compared to traditional propellers. It will also be coated with a special anechoic layer, a rubber-like material on the outside of the hull that absorbs sound and makes it harder for enemy sonar to detect the submarine. In addition, the large aperture bow sonar system will be included, allowing the submarine to detect other ships and submarines from far away. Additionally, the Columbia class may feature an advanced combat system called the Submarine Warfare Federated Tactical System. This is a collection of integrated tools and systems that combine sonar, optical imaging, and weapons control into a single network, allowing the crew to make faster, smarter decisions during missions. To reduce long-term costs and make the submarine much quieter, the Columbia class will use a fully electric drive system. In older submarines, power from the nuclear reactor would go through a series of heavy gears and shafts, like how a bicycle chain connects the pedals to the wheels to spin the propeller. But in the Columbia class, that mechanical setup is replaced with an electric motor, similar to what you'd find in a modern electric car. Instead of making noise through turning parts, the motor runs quietly using electricity. This makes a submarine much harder to detect underwater, which is exactly what any nanny would want when they are trying to stay hidden from enemy forces. The submarine will still be powered by a nuclear reactor, just like other submarines in the United States Navy. Here's how it works in simple terms. The nuclear reactor heats water and turns it into steam. That steam powers turbines, which create mechanical energy. Then generators take that mechanical energy and turn it into electricity. That electricity will run the submarine's propulsion motors, as well as power other systems on board everything from computers to life support. This technology, known as turboelectric drive, is not entirely new. It was successfully used in United States battleships and aircraft carriers during the early part of the 20th century, and even in a small nuclear-powered submarine called the USS Tullaby in the 1950s. Later, a larger submarine named the USS Glenard P. Lipscomb was also built with this type of system. But in that case, the system had problems. It was underpowered, hard to maintain, and not very reliable. Engineers have come a long way since then, and the electric drive in the Columbia class will use modern technology to avoid those issues. As of 2013, the only submarines in the world using turboelectric systems were the Triumphant class submarines in the French Navy. In 24, the defense contractor Northrop Grumman was selected to design and manufacture the turbine generator units for the Columbia-class submarines. In 2014, a company called Leonardo DRS was chosen to supply the main propulsion motor and the system that powers it for the new Columbia-class submarines. This is the heart of the submarine's electric drive system, the part that turns electric energy into motion. The motor for the first submarine in the class was delivered to Electric Boat in August 2022. Electric motors are becoming more important in both military and civilian ships because they are more efficient, quieter, and easier to maintain than older mechanical systems. The United States Navy is now looking into advanced types of electric motors for its future submarines. One type being developed by General Dynamics in Newport News Shipbuilding is called the Permanent Magnet Motor. These motors use powerful magnets to create rotation instead of relying on bulky mechanical parts. 
This design makes them smaller, quieter, and more energy efficient than traditional motors, which makes them perfect for submarines that need to move silently and stay hidden underwater. American superconductors and General Atomics are developing a new kind of electric motor called a high-temperature superconducting synchronous motor. This may sound complicated, but here's what it means. They use special materials that can carry electricity with almost no energy loss. Think of it as water flowing through a pipe with no leaks. This allows the motor to be very powerful while staying small and compact, which is great for use inside a submarine where space is limited. Interestingly, other countries are already using this kind of motor in their submarines. For example, the German and Italian navies use Siemens permanent magnet motors in their Type 212 submarines. The United States has also tested this technology. In 2013, engineers tried out permanent magnet motors on a test submarine called the Large Scale Vehicle 2. It was like a prototype used to see if these motors could work well in future submarines like the Virginia class or even newer designs. The Royal Navy's upcoming Dreadnought class submarines, which will replace the current Vanguard class ballistic missile submarines, may feature a shaftless drive system, a new type of electric propulsion that could change how submarines move through the water. Now let's compare the Columbia class submarine from the United States with the nuclear submarines used by China and Russia, two other major nuclear powers. Today, China's main nuclear missile submarine is the Type 094, also known as the Jin class. China's second generation ballistic missile submarine is designed to carry 12 JL-2 nuclear missiles. These missiles have a shorter range than America's Trident missiles, which means Chinese submarines have to sail much closer to their targets before launching an attack. The Type 094 is noisier than submarines built by Western countries, making it easier for enemy sonar to detect. This limits how well it can stay hidden during underwater patrols. China is currently working on a Type 096 submarine that is expected to be quieter and carry the newer JL-3 missiles, but that submarine is still under development. Russia's most modern nuclear missile submarine is the Beret class, also known as Project 955. These submarines carry 16 Bulava missiles, each capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. The Beret class is quieter and more advanced than Russia's older submarines and shows a major improvement in technology. Compared to the Columbia class, the Beret class is slightly smaller in size but still very capable. However, United States submarines tend to have more advanced electronics and navigation systems thanks to larger investments in undersea warfare technology. While China's Type 094 is still catching up and Russia's Beret class remains a strong competitor, the Columbia class stands out for its cutting-edge long-term nuclear power and highly advanced missile systems. The United Kingdom operates four Vanguard-class submarines, which serve as the nation's sole nuclear deterrent. Each submarine carries Trident II D-5 missiles, like the U.S., Ohio, and Columbia-class subs. The British submarines patrol continuously, with at least one always at sea, a policy known as continuous at-sea deterrence. However, the Vanguard-class submarines are aging, and the UK plans to replace them with the upcoming Dreadnought-class. This class will feature improved stealth, a longer service life, and continued partnership with the U.S. for missile systems. As the global race for undersea power continues, these submarines show how vital submarine strength is in today's nuclear strategy. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.